What do all these products have in common? Well, besides being random products I personally bought off of Amazon, they all are very successful and all had some form of post-purchase funnel. Hey everyone, Scott here, and I've been successfully selling private label on Amazon for many years, and I can say that this is a key strategy of seven-figure Amazon sellers. I'll be diving into everything you need to know in this video so that you can take advantage of these post-purchase funnels as well to drive more profit, more reviews, and better product launches. So first off, what is a post-purchase funnel? Simply put, it's a way to capture your customer's contact info so you can market to them or communicate with them further. Amazon doesn't give sellers the customer's contact info like the phone number or email address, so a post-purchase funnel is a way to get this info. Some of the benefits of being able to contact a list of people that have purchased from you are being able to sell more by getting more repeat purchases or cross-selling other products you may have, driving more product reviews, launching new products, boosting your organic rankings, and something that's often overlooked is it building a loyal base of customers that love your brand. So I think you can see the value of this, but having a customer list is only as valuable as how you use it. If you build a list and then never use it, then it's not worth much. So now we're gonna get into the different ways to implement a post-purchase funnel, how to set it up, and what to do with the leads you get. All right, so let's go over some of the different types of promotions you can use on your inserts, and I'm gonna give some real life examples right afterwards. Now, not all these promotions will make sense for every product, but you can pick and choose the ones that make the most sense for yours. So the first one is an easy one, which is a dollar off or percentage off their next order, or off of another product you may have, you're trying to do some cross selling. So the way I like to do this is I personally don't like to give super steep discounts. I prefer that their second order or additional order for me using that promo code is at a profit. So at least make some money on that next order. Another option, pretty popular one, is an extended warranty. So see, sometimes they can opt in for an extended warranty on their product, maybe like a one year or three year or lifetime, whatever you want to do on that. Another option is a PDF, an ebook, or a digital offer that adds value to your product. Another option is a loyalty group. This could be like a VIP group that they're a part of, or it could be something like a Facebook group that has to do with your niche. Let's say you're you know, selling keto products. You could have a Facebook group that's like a keto lovers that's sponsored by your brand or kind of run by your brand and you get them to join that. And that way you can have a big group of people that are really interested and dedicated to uh, the type of category that your product is in. Another option is a giveaway contest. So this is something like having them opt in to enter a contest where you give away something every, let's say every month or every quarter, it's something you could give away more product or you could give away money, but my advice with this is just make sure that you actually do it. You know, don't have a fake contest where you never actually give away anything. Uh, actually do it, announce the winners, promote it, and it helps lend credibility to you. Now, the next option you'll see a lot is giving away a free product. So they opt in and they get a free product. I'm personally not a big fan of doing this, giving away free product, but if you did want to do it, I suggest it for products that don't cost that much. So if your cost of goods is only like $5 or less, could make sense. You'll see this often in very competitive categories like supplements or beauty products, but oftentimes those products also have a cheaper cost of goods. And lastly, it could be some combination of the above. It could be, let's say, opt-in to the extended warranty and get a percentage off your next order. It could be uh, opt-in to get this ebook and get a percentage off your next order. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about this and you can always change your offer another time. Let's say you put in inserts, you don't like the offer, you wanna change the offer. The next time you order inventory, just put in a different insert. So I thought it'd be really interesting to show some real life examples of the types of promotions I've gotten on inserts from products I've bought off of Amazon. Now I'm not gonna show all of them or show the website URL or the QR code to get to their opt-in funnel. So be sending random people uh, to their opt-in flow, but I'll do my best to explain what they are. So. What's really popular with supplements is free products. I'm not gonna read all these off. About one, two, three, four of the supplement bottles that I have actually just offer another free product, which supplements are a very competitive category. So a lot of sellers will do anything they can to give themselves an advantage by building a list. They can use that to try to ask them for more reviews or to help them with future product launches or for repeat purchases because uh, with supplements or their consumables, they're hoping that people come back and buy more and more. Another one here is 30% uh, off their next order. That's a pretty good one. I like that one. This one's interesting. It's a warranty card for a two-year warranty and a five-star membership. So I'm assuming that's kind of like a loyalty club. So they're combining both of those. This one's also an interesting one. It's for the ice mold I was showing in the beginning of the video. 
and it offers a warranty and a free ebook. And the ebook was actually uh, going over some cocktail recipes. So you can see how that kind of combines uh, or ties in and adds value to the product. This one is for the coffee filter that I had. And it's another combination which says a $5 gift card and a warranty registration. So again, combining uh, the two options, they also uh, give a URL and a QR code on here, a QR code on here. So again, like I said, giving multiple options to get to the opt-in and combining some of the promotions that I mentioned before. And this one's pretty interesting. They're getting very aggressive with this one, which is offering two free products. Let's see if I can uh, at least give you an idea of what this one looks like. They are offering uh, two of their product uh, in exchange for opting into something. So that gives you a good idea. A lot of it is free product, which I don't know as many brands are doing anymore in certain categories like supplements. You'll see that a lot, but uh, like I mentioned, if your product cost is really low, you can think about doing that. I prefer if I'm going to give away something to give away a discount code. Um, but again, I think the key to this is make it enticing. So the best way to do that is to combine uh, different promotions like uh, percentage or dollar off plus uh, something else like an ebook or a warranty, and you'll be in good shape with that. Okay, so next let's go over how to capture the info. The first way is a landing page. This is just a page they go to, which will have a form where they can put in the email address, their phone number, or both. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't need to use click funnels or anything like that. Most landing page software, even the cheaper ones, have a way to have an opt-in form. Or if you already have a Shopify website or a website, you can usually just create a form on one of those pages and send them uh, there. Another option is to use portals, which is a tool inside of Helium 10. So if you're a Helium 10 user, you can use portals, which is basically a landing page software built inside of there. You have templates, make it really easy to edit the templates with the content you want and have the uh, opt-in forms and everything there already. So that's a super easy way to go about doing it uh, if you're using Helium 10. Another option that I think is really good that I don't see used very often is a texting funnel. Basically, you'll have them text a keyword to a phone number using some type of uh, texting software, SMS software. And then from there, they'll go through a, a predefined funnel where you'll capture their, they'll put in their email address and et cetera to opt into whatever you're doing. Another option is to use ManyChat or some other messaging software to where you can send them there, you can capture email addresses, and you can capture text uh, phone numbers inside of ManyChat if you want to do that. Or, you know, some similar software. These are just some of the main ones, but there's lots of different uh, variations of these types of software. So now we want to go over how do you actually send them from the insert to where you're capturing your info? Well, one way to do it is to have a website URL. It could be your own website that you just create another page for, or I've seen uh, brands just buy a domain name that has to maybe do it with their niche or something like that. Like it could be uh, getfreeproduct.com. That's just an example, but uh, you can get the idea. You can also use a QR code that they can scan with their phone to get to either your landing page or your uh, funnel, messaging funnel really easily. Another option, like I mentioned, using a texting funnel is you just have a phone number on them and on there and tell them to text it. And I believe that giving multiple options is best. So you could have your website URL and a QR code or a phone number and QR code and a website URL, depending on the different ways you want to capture the info. So now let's get into how to create the inserts. The first thing you want to do is decide on whether you're using paper inserts or stickers. So paper inserts are best for products that have packaging that you can stick the insert inside of. If you don't have any packaging, you probably wondered, well, how can I do an insert? Well, the answer to that is a sticker. You put a sticker onto the lid or the outside of the product uh, that basically acts as your insert. There's also some really cool stickers to where you can uh, peel them. So it just says, hey, get your special offer. And then they, uh, you have it where you peel it up and then it has all the info inside. And then you wanna turn your dimensions. So that just depends on your product, uh, your size. Some people use inserts as small as business cards or they might use a postcard size. Again, depends on how much info you wanna put on your insert, how much graphics you wanna have. Uh, in the size of your product or packaging. For designing, you can use Canva, which is a software that makes it really easy for people to design, uh, to make their own designs. Even if you're not proficient with Photoshop or anything like that, Canva makes it super easy to create good designs. Or you can hire a designer. You can get them for pretty cheap on Fiverr or Upwork. What I can recommend to get the best results from using something like Fiverr is to at least have some type of idea of what you want on the insert or some type of design inspiration. And then using that, the designer will come up with a good design. So how you find inspiration is really just using Google image search. So you can just go to Google, type in Amazon product inserts or product inserts, and just look through different images and get some ideas 
uh, for them. And then actually have them printed. Sometimes your manufacturer can actually print them for you. Or if not, you can just get another printer to print them and then send them to your manufacturer to insert inside of the product. So now we get to a very important part, which is what do you do with these contacts that you're getting? The first thing obviously is to deliver whatever is on the insert. So they give you their info and then you send them their discount code or warranty or PDF or whatever it was. Next, since this is when they are most receptive to communication and most likely to respond, you might want to ask them how they're liking their product or maybe ask them for a product review or try to get them to purchase from you again by offering a discount code or cross-selling another product you offer. Now, the huge mistake that Amazon sellers make is they stop right there. And then maybe in a few months, they'll reach out about a product they're launching or with a promo code. But by that time, the customer has likely forgotten about you or they just don't care as much anymore and aren't likely to respond. You might've heard of the concept of a hot lead and a cold lead. Well, hot leads are when they're most interested and likely to convert and cold leads don't convert very well. Once a customer opts into your insert, that is when they're hottest and the more time that goes by, the colder that they get. So the goal at this point is to keep them warm. And the best way to do that is by keeping in regular contact with them through email or whatever method you think is best. Could be as little as once a week, or every couple of weeks, or even as little as once a month. But it's a good idea to come with some context ahead of time that you can send them. Could be about your brand, your story, uh, what you stand for, some blog content, uh, helpful articles, even just funny stories that tie into your product or brand, or occasionally sending a promotion for your products. You can get creative with it based on the type of brand you have. And keeping your customer list warm will help you build your brand loyalty, making them more likely to leave positive reviews, and it makes it easier to get them to help you with things in the future, like product launches. It can really help your product launches by having a group of people that want to buy your product as soon as it launches. And since they like your brand, they're more likely to leave a positive review. Another option I should mention is to use what I call a buy or unsubscribe method, which is where you keep sending your list promotions and promotions until they either buy or unsubscribe from your list. I'm personally not a big fan of doing this, but I have seen some larger brands do this and it is better than just never contacting your list. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to go over a question I see in a lot of forums and Facebook groups, which is, are inserts allowed by Amazon? The disclaimer here is that this is just all my opinion and I'm not telling you what to do. That's up to you. But my opinion at the time of making this video is that inserts are okay as long as they are done properly. Don't do anything that's obviously against terms of service, like uh, asking for positive reviews or incentivizing reviews, offering rebates, or telling people to buy from your own website instead of Amazon next time. Always recommend keeping up to date on Amazon's terms of service to see what's allowed since they do update and change it occasionally. That's the official source. Ultimately, I always say your business, your choice, and don't do anything you feel unsure about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments down below. I always do my best to try to answer them. I'd really appreciate it if you took this moment to like and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos if you enjoy Amazon FBA and e-commerce content, and I hope to see you in the next one.